I've got three more integrals for us to tackle using integration by parts. Let's get to it. All right, so here we have this integral. So we have x e to the x minus e to the x. Now the first strategy that you might want to do is split this into two terms. And so you could say minus the integral of e to the x, and we already know that one. And then this one we've actually already seen, and we used integration by parts to get there as well. So I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to actually do is notice the common factor here, e to the x. So I'm going to factor out e to the x, and then I'm going to set up integration by parts. So now I have two terms here, e to the x, and then I have x minus 1. So one of these is going to be f, and one is going to be g prime. So I'll set up a 2 by 2 matrix, and in the first spot I put f. So let's put x minus 1 and e to the x. So recall from my formula, this first spot was f and then g prime. Then we had derivative and original function. So that's kind of off to the side. So my derivative here is going to be 1 and my integral is e to the x. So actually I'm quite happy with that without thinking too far ahead about how this is going to look. So now when I set up this integral, if I just do it on this line, actually I shouldn't write that. So here I just rewrote this and this equality now I'll bring down to the next line. So I have this nice shape in my two by two matrix. That's my integral across the top. And then the integral equals these two multiplied together and then my third and final portion is to integrate the bottom row. So here I have x minus 1 times e to the x, and then I subtract the integral, and now it's just what's on the bottom row. And so that is just e to the x dx. So that's a nice integral. So I can now say that this, without doing any simplification, is minus e to the x plus c. Let's just rearrange this, or let's just reformat, or let's just see if I can move that over. e to the x, x minus 1. OK, so here is the full line. Uh, and you may want to expand and factor that, um, but that's not necessary at this stage. So that's just showing how we can factor out a term and then use integration by parts. Here we have one of my all-time favorite examples, uh, which might be strange to have a favorite example of integration by parts, but the integral of ln x. So we talk a lot about the derivative of the natural log being 1 over x. Well, what about the integral? So you may recall, or you may know this, or you may look it up, and so I'll just write this off to the side. The integral of the natural log x is x ln x minus x plus c. And in fact, you may have done this so much that you've just remembered it. So that just may appear in your mental formula sheet. But how do we actually get there? So we're going to use integration by parts to do this. Now the first thing that students ask me is, well, what do I have? I only have ln x. That x, you can't pull it out of the natural log. It's part of it. It's packaged together. So how do I split this into two functions? And here's the trick, is that you introduce another function that doesn't change the original function. So I've got ln x. And then what you're going to do is multiply it by 1. So that doesn't change that function, right? But it does introduce something else. And now you can say, oh, hang on. Now I have a split here. And so one of these can be f, and one of these can be g prime. So let's set up my matrix. So in my first spot, I put f. Let's go ln x. And then the derivative 
is one over x. In my next plot, I put g prime, so this is going to be just one, all right? And then I need to integrate to get g. So what's the integral of one? Well, it's just x. Just fill in those notes on what my matrix means here. So let's go ahead and say what the integral now, ln x dx equals. So the first thing I'm doing is on the diagonal. So that's x ln x. Subtract my next integral, which is on the bottom row. So that's one over x multiplied by x. One over x times x dx. And hopefully you see straight away what happens here. We have one over x multiplied by x. So that's x over x. So that's the integral of, well, what's x over x? Anything over itself is one. So this integral now is x ln x minus the integral, just one dx. So that integral, what's the integral of one? That's just the variable. Plus c, and now we have, using integration by parts, uh, sort of a nice derivation for what you may already have committed to memory for the integral of ln x. In my next example, it looks fairly innocent. The integral of sine squared of x. Remember, you can expand this, and so this can be sine x times sine x. And in this case, if I'm going to use integration by parts, your choices are sort of already made for you, right? One of these needs to be f, and one of these needs to be g prime. So let's go ahead and put them in. So I've got sine x and sine x. Okay, well, derivative of sine is cosine, and the integral of sine is negative cosine. All right, so let's keep up with our integrals. So let's rewrite it. So integral sine squared equals, and now I'm on the diagonal here. So this is sine times negative cosine. So what will that be? Negative sine cos minus the integral. And now I'm on the bottom row. So that's double cos or cosine squared with a negative. So negative cosine squared x. Okay, so at this point, sort of take a moment and think about where we are and what we're looking for. I now need to integrate negative cos squared x. And I just started integrating sine squared x. And sine and cos are related. So let's take a note about our trig functions here, right? So I have a sine squared on the left, and I have a cos squared on the right. So how are these two related to each other? So there's this neat little trig identity. It says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I can rearrange this here, and I can say, well, what does cosine by itself equal? So I could say cosine squared x equals one minus sine squared x. And then I can do a little substitution in here. So let's write another step. So I've turned that double negative into a positive, and then I've made that substitution for one minus sine squared x. So now the integral here of one, I know that, that turns into x, and the integral of sine squared x is actually the same as 
on the left hand side. I have sine squared x. So I have integral sine squared x on the left and I have integral sine squared x on the right. Okay, so I'll expand this in the next step. And now I have a negative integral sine squared on the right and I can just add it. I can add that whole term and I can also add it to the left, right? You can do anything to both sides of the equation. So when I do that, I get two of them on the left. So this becomes two integral sine squared dx. And then on the right, I have minus sine x. I've been rewriting this one a lot. It hasn't changed. And then this integral plus one is now plus x. And now to isolate my original question, which was just without the two on the left, well, all I have to do is divide both sides by two. So let's divide the whole thing by two and let's cross out the two on the left. So therefore, I had an extra plus sign in here that I'm just going to erase. That was an error. Uh, so maybe I'll just put the x out front x minus sine x cos x over 2. So that is my integral using this trick where I recognize that the integral I'm looking for has shown up again and I can combine them and solve for it. So that ends our integration by parts examples. Make sure you do lots more so that you become a lot more fluid at it and that helps to develop that mathematical intuition uh, so that you kind of have a feeling for where you're going before you set the pencil to paper and try to get there.